Hey everyone, I'm Chef Dennis, and welcome to Around the Kitchen Table. Uh, today we're going to have uh, some caponata. It's one of my favorite dishes, just pasta. Although you might think everything's my favorite dish. Well, pretty much it is. I love to eat. But uh, caponata is a wonderful dish to serve in the summertime. Uh, it's made with some fresh vegetables, eggplant, zucchini, uh, olives. It's pretty simple to make. There's a lot of different recipes for caponata, and this is one of them. This is one of the ones that I've made. Uh, somebody had asked about a variation using raisins this morning, and yeah, you can put raisins in, you can put capers in, uh, you can change the herbs up, you can make it a little spicier, but you know, it's just a wonderful uh, relish to use to serve with grilled meats, uh, grilled seafood. We're going to do it on pasta today, but it, you know, it's just a really tasty, easy dish to make. Uh, that can help make your uh, dinner time more flavorful, and it's a great dish. On, it's a great topping on sandwiches as well. So, and I've got my co-host Susan Sarah with me. How you doing, Susan? Good to see you. Hi, today. everybody. Hi, good. I'm doing great. It's a beautiful, uh, almost summer day here, and uh, and I love the idea of caponata uh, because I love the idea of you know easy and those those fresh. Uh, tastes and uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, you know seeing what you're you're putting in it. I've looked at a whole bunch of recipes. I found one with uh, you know four or five cloves of garlic in it. So I'm not so sure about that one, but um, you know this this will be fun. And I'm totally going to stump the chef because I have a bunch of thought questions and. Uh, you know about where you where and how you can use it and what all is in it and I wonder if it's just one of those things that you just kind of put stuff together <laughs> it very well could be you know it's uh, I think it falls under the category of you know, what you might have had fresh in the house at the time or uh, probably varies depending upon what you're serving it with too you know, you could make it a little more uh, attuned to if you were serving game or if you were serving seafood or you know, if you just wanted to put it on a salad. You know, this would be great on a pasta salad, too, with everything that's in it. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, uh, but it's really last, good. Yep, last week we talked about um, outdoor kitchens. And this kind of um, dish it, or relish, it makes me think of... Uh, you know, just easy, making things easy and eating outdoors. And this this week again, I entertained outdoors uh, for Father's Day. And uh, you know, I, it's it's those types of things that I think you can make in advance, right? To to okay. just kind of you know enjoy outdoors. And you know, I I discovered one amazing product that I want to tell you about. And you know, I mean, you certainly have your heat down there in Florida. And I mean, when it gets 75 and sunny up here, hey, I'm roasting. And I know you'll laugh at that. So what we did is, uh, you know, we can't sit in the sun for any period of time. So what I found was this thing called a shade sail. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I never heard of it. And so it's this thing you can get in Amazon or I guess places like Target or wherever, and you just kind of hang it up. It's this big piece of fabric and some kind of nylon fabric. And the one we bought was really big. It was 17 feet by 17 feet. And you know what? It instantly, you have instant shade. It instantly cools down the area. And you know what? Then you're outside. For an extended period of time, it's amazing. Yeah, it it really is something that how much things change when you have shade. I mean, especially here in Florida. I mean, it'll get 20, 30 degrees cooler just by going in the shade. And and I've seen the shade sails, and I've actually seen them made out of actual sails uh, from sailboats, and that was pretty cool. You have the numbers on it, the, the different designs like they have on the sails. So, you know, yeah, it's a great idea. And, you know, a lot of them are shaped like a sail. So if you've got kind yes. of an odd-shaped backyard, you know, it really lends itself fitting over the face. It really does. Um, and, you know, but the other part of it, too, uh, you know, when I'm thinking more about, uh, you know, dining and entertaining outdoors, you know, it'll protect your food a little bit, a little bit more than 
uh, you know, than sitting out in the sun. And I think my next mission is going to be to look for products or kind of figure out how you can keep foods cool outdoors. You know, I mean, that I think would uh, solve so many problems. Do you have any ideas or thoughts about that? What do you do down there? That's rough. Because the heat can kill stuff faster than anything, and other than icing it down or freezing, you know, doing using those freezer packs and, yeah. and keeping things killed that way, you don't have a lot of options. Although they, I did see some outside, um, you know, not the refrigerator, but they're for beverages that you plug in. Um, they're little bins and and different things like that. So I mean, there are some alternatives, but really, if you're going to have food out. I just would not have it out for extended periods of time, you know, and and you have to really, you know, as much as it may hurt, you have to really watch how long you've got it outside and, and what kind of food it is. You know, a burger is, isn't going to, once it's cooked, you're not going to have too many problems with it, but if you're putting potato salad out there or something with mayonnaise, you got to really be careful because you don't want to get someone sick, you know, with bacteria building up, uh, which it, it multiplies pretty quickly if you're not careful. Yeah, that's true. So I, so I'm on a mission. I'm going to be looking, looking at, you know, different products and ideas. And I think on a future show, I think I'll share some with you. And today, um, we're talking about Campanata, and we, we don't have an official guest, but you can say that we're both the guests. And you know, when I was thinking about Campanata and all the, the colors in it, and the fresh. Uh, you know the the fresh foods. I was thinking that um, our audience may not be aware, but I I'm a amateur photographer, and I've been a photographer since I was a teenager. And back in the day, I had my own dark room, so I've been yep. doing this forever. And so I was thinking about this caponata, and then I was thinking about color, and then I was thinking it made me think about decor in the kitchen. And and then I was thinking, well, you can't, you don't really arrange your decor to what you're eating. But what about food photography? What about the photography in the kitchen for to kind of change things around? So I'm going to be sharing some of those uh, thoughts and ideas, and and hope to get some thoughts from uh, our audience too on it. Sure, you know, food photography is, is fun. People use Instagram. Uh, you know, anybody on social media now has, has found that they can take pictures with their cam, with their phone, uh, you know, and, and loading them up. Like I, I use Instagram for fun for the most part, but you know, I have a serious camera that I use for taking food pictures too. And you know, I'm old school too. I started in the uh, got back in the '80s, I think it was, taking pictures seriously, and I had a Pentax six by seven, and you know, shot. Just in white, I worked for a for developing everything. So, you know, I kept waiting for the digital craze to just pass by. You know, I thought, oh, this oh. this won't last. It'll never last. Oh so, yeah, it no. took me a while. To try. Yeah, I know. It seems like it did. So, uh, yeah. So that's going to be fun. I mean, that's a whole new topic for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can compare yeah. lots of notes. So go ahead. What do we do first? Okay, let me get started with the caponata then. Um, today I roasted my vegetables because I went out to use my grill and there seemed to be a leak coming from the hose that fed the grill and try as I may I couldn't get it to stop uh, the gas from coming out. So I figured it's better not to use it today. So I did use my oven and I cooked up some eggplant. And what I did was I cut the eggplant into slices. I very simply oiled it up and I um, Salt and pepper, it's sea salt, black pepper. Very simple, and I put it in the oven. I roasted it on one side. I actually had the broiler on, and then I flipped it over and did the other side. I drained it on paper towels to try and get rid of the grease, because in the oven there's going to be a little bit more grease than you probably would have on the grill. It'll dry out a so, little bit more. So, but, Chef, did, did you say that you salted it? You salted it before I, you put it? I, uh, as soon as I cut it. I put it in some olive oil and sea salt and black pepper. Right. Okay, so. that's what I thought you said. And what are what are they about a quarter inch, uh, eighth inch, a quarter inch slices thick? They're yeah, about a quarter. Some of them are a little thinner. Some are about an eight inch. I'm just gonna dice them up. So you just don't want them like this is probably a little too thick, and this is a quarter. So I'd say about an eighth of an inch. 
you just have to be careful, especially with zucchini because it's so fragile that you don't you don't overcook it. It doesn't turn to mush. This is real close, and uh, that if you make them too thin, that's exactly what'll happen. But from here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to slice these into like strips, and I have everything else prepared, so it won't take a lot of time okay. putting it together. But I'm just going to cut these into strips. Uh huh. And I like I like a heavily eggplant based caponata because I love eggplant. I do it really, too. It lends itself really, really well to a dish like this. I do too. You know, I'm always searching for the perfect eggplant parmesan. So I think we've got to do that. Absolutely. You know, I don't I don't quite do it the way some people do in terms of preparing it. Okay, so this is kinda this is real close to being a little overcooked. But it's because it's a, it's just a little soft, and you know it's really tricky. I, I do better on the grill because I think I have a little bit more control of how it cooks and it stays a little drier. When you do it in the oven, you tend to get a little bit more oil than you might want. Okay, so for that matter, then you could do it on a grill pan in, indoors, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Yeah, you know, you, you, it's really there's such a delicate vegetable. It's a very time cooking item, so you just want to watch it. So that's good for the eggplant. Save this to eat later. And the same thing with the zucchini. I'm just going to put them on top of each other and knock these all out very quick. And again, we're just so doing. Now, now, the eggplant, once mm -hmm. you put that salt on it and you roast it, does, does it let out some of the moisture? Is that the purpose? Is that part of the purpose of it? Well, I salt on it to season it, but yeah, it will get some of the liquid out of it. But, you know, this is still pretty moist eggplant. It really didn't lose a lot of moisture. But I know people salt it to yeah, get the bitterness it. out, they say. You know, yeah, I always um, hear about that salty eggplant. I gotta tell you, I never do when I make parm, and it's never bitter. I never have a problem with. It. So anyway, I have in in the pan, I have some diced up eggplant, some diced up zucchini. Now I'm very simply going to add some tomato, some diced green olives, and you can use black if you want to mix it up. If you want to use some niçoise or something else in it, that's fine. I have a little bit of crushed red pepper for some heat, mm -hmm. a little bit of sea salt, and actually I have a little sugar, and I know people probably cringing. Wow, up. that's a few, that's a good amount of sugar. One tablespoon, and I have a quarter cup of vinegar. So I'm making a sweet and sour caponata a little bit. And it's, it's what we like. And again, if there's something in it that you don't like, leave it out. It's not something that's etched in stone here. So I'm going to toss this. And I also have a little bit of fresh basil. And I added a little bit of fresh parsley in too. Oh, love that. I okay. bet that makes all the difference. Look at that. Beautiful. So, you know, if you like it a little heavier on herbs, this could use, this could take, you know, twice as much of the chopped basil if you really wanted to. Uh, this could use some capers in it if you wanted to add a little bit of a salty element to it, and that would change it up a little bit. You can now, what do you think? You know, I was wondering about that capers and olives. I mean, mm -hmm. do you think that's a bit much, or is... Because you have two different flavors. I mean, a caper is really distinctive and different from an olive on how it tastes. So it's going to add another element of flavor, another layer of flavor to it. And we like olives. So I make this a little bit heavy on the olive side, which, you know, again, if you don't want as many olives in, it's a real simple solution just to leave some of them out. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Wow, I love that pan cam. That is now, one of the funny. nice things about this, and we're going to talk. I'm just going to show you how I will use it tonight. Uh, let me change the cameras here. 
I know that's nice to have. And did you notice I had a different color coat on today? I was going to mention that before, right after we got started. I absolutely do love it. Love the it's, maroon. It's plum. It's plum. Oh, it's plum. <laughs> yes, it is plum. Okay. I feel like I should be breaking out in the show tunes, but no. I know. <laughs> yeah, but where's your embroidered name? I don't see that. It's on there. You know, my wife said the same thing. She said you should have got it in white. It's right here. It's in black. Oh, okay. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna do it in gold, but I didn't want to seem too pretentious, so. Oh, you know, I go for the gold, always. Yeah. Definitely. I'm gonna put a little pasta on, and I'll show you how we're gonna serve this. One of the ways you can serve this. And then we will get talking about some other things. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I want to stump you on. How many ways can we serve it? How many, uh, how many uses do you have for caponata? Well, I will tell you what my favorite uses are for caponata, and we'll go from there. One of my favorite ways to eat it is, of course, over pasta, and we're going to do that. But probably my second favorite is on a sandwich, is on a nice Italian meat sandwich. Almost like a muffaletta, yeah. not quite an olive tapenade, a little different. And there's times, like you mentioned garlic. Yeah. Personally, and again personally, I would never put raw garlic in this because it would seem a little too hot for me yeah. in terms of raw garlic. Yeah. But roasted garlic in this would be oh, outrageous. Yes, you're outrageous. You're absolutely. Now, do you know that so, kind I mean, of... That's another one. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a bruschetta top. Uh huh. I think the audio's going back and forth a little bit. I feel like you're in, uh, you know, the, the Middle East or or Asia or someplace. And you know, with that with that delay, I think that's what we're having. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I see the little time lag too. So, um, I actually have you on two cam on two cameras here, and I see it going back and forth a bit. Sometimes one's ahead of the other. So. It could be something on my end here too, with uh, with what we're having today in the internet. So, oh yeah, who knows? Yeah. Now, what about caponata on? Would you would you serve it with grilled fish? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, what I actually what kind have, of grilled fish? Uh, um, I like it with a white fish, with a, a mild snapper, uh, mahi mahi, tilapia, flounder. Um, monkfish even, you know, anything, uh, not not so much tuna, again, it would go with it. Uh, maybe it's because I don't like tuna as much uh, or steak fishes as much, but, you know, it would go with them very well. So, I mean, I actually have a post that I did, caponata on a grilled fish, and I, I forget which one it was. might have been tile fish. Uh, works wonderful with it. Uh, works really good with the grilled chicken breasts. Um, like I said, you can use it as a bruschetta topping, um, you could serve it on little arugula leaves, or not arugula leaves. Um, oh, what's the other, the one that's really good for you, and I can never remember it. Oh, if it's, it's good, good it's a, really good. Um, if it's really good for you, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, was one a doctor. <laughs> you don't know it. <laughs> um, oh boy, that pains me. Um, um, starts with a B. Uh, starts with a B. <laughs> okay. I'll, uh, see, now I'm stumping both of us. We need some help from the audience. And it's a green, it's some kind of green. Oh, well, yeah, it's a, it's a bitter green. It's uh, It's got like little scooped out leaves. Um, not Boston lettuce. It comes not, in Boston, a, not Boston no, no, lettuce, no. It's, it's, uh, we'll think of it. Andive? But anyway, Andive? this even some... Endive, Belgium endive. There we go. There we go. I knew it started with a B, but Belgium. <laughs> I know my food. I know my food. <laughs> I, really um, I, I blame it on old age, <laughs> on me. So, uh, but yeah, you know, you could use this uh, just as a relish served with it with any other thing you want to serve it with. Think of it in terms of that. It's a, you know, it's just something to put out with other foods. And like I said, Lisa likes to eat this just by the spoonful. Like if there's any leftover when we're done, she'll just sit there. I mean, if you wanted to make it a little different, you could. I mean, this is probably sacrilege as far as Italians are concerned. But I was even thinking you could put some roasted corn in here. Oh, 
Uh, what was I thinking? I was thinking of because, something you know, also that was sacrilegious. Um, what what was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was wondering if you could if you could put sort of like Italian like prosciutto and proteins like Italian salami prosciutto and almost make it like you know a little bit of a protein side salad sort of thing. You're making it into an end, um, and I, I think what I like there would be to to, to put it in with some uh, small shape pasta, like some shells or some rotini or something, and add your proteins in there, some salami or, or prosciutto or some uh, cheese, and then mix it with it too, and you'd have a really wonderful salad. Okay, let me ask you this: if this is a totally wrong idea or if this would be fun. What about caponata and regatta cheese mixed together? Any relationship at all? You know, I, I have never thought of it, but it might make... I, I'm afraid that if you baked it, you'd have to make sure you put enough egg in it because everything's going to run. There's going to be a lot of liquid in it. It might be really tasty together with fresh, just eating it like that's what like I almost meant. like you eat yogurt. Yeah, yeah. a little well, bit of spoon of that is surprising. Or on the pasta, maybe you put a little dollop on the side yeah. of it. That'd be I wonderful. Know, just yeah. thinking. Buffalo mozzarella too. You know, one of the two. Okay. You know, it's, it's a different kind. It's not quite caprese, but it's the same thought. So, yeah, it's a great idea. Good. Good. Uh, hey, listen. What about what about um, you know you have yeah caprese, but what about putting that on tomatoes, right? And then that, and then caponata, and then whole basil leaves for a whole other you know kind of a mixture. You know what else you could do? I'm just thinking. You could take like an eggplant parm, or you wouldn't even have to parm it. You could just grill circles of eggplant and do a double eggplant kind of thing, grill them, and then put a spoonful of this on, and maybe melt a little cheese on top of it, or a little parm or a little Romano cheese on top of it, and make a real nice little appetizer. Love it. Oh, yeah, an appetizer. That's yeah. good. You know Love what I forgot? I forgot to put a little oh, olive geez. oil on this, too. It oh, yeah. Much, but no. it does need some olive oil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's better. And this would be a good time even to break out some of the good olive oil, just to hit it with a little bit of drizzle of good olive oil uh, to really enrich these flavors. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty strong. I mean, you got a lot of olives in it, so it's going to have a, a really nice flavor as it is. And I, I have the pasta on, and that's cooking, so we're almost ready with that. And uh, let's see, we have some comments here. And yeah, my, my tracker isn't working, so you do the comments today. Okay, I mean, we have it's, I'm not working. I didn't work it right, so you go ahead. Checking is to see what's good cooking. What's cooking good looking? There we go. Oh, I think that was directed to me, Chef. I think that was directed to me. I, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think so. No, it definitely wasn't me. Uh, Cheryl Deuce is checking in. Coach Moore is checking in. Uh, Carmen Mandich is here, trying to serve as many cold dishes as possible when entertaining outdoors. Many foods that are usually served warm can be very tasty, served cold, or room temperature even. So, you know, that's a good thing to remember. All right. So we're good. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about photography, if you like, Susan. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. The, uh, yeah, well, you know, like I said. A couple said. minutes left in the month. Sure. Like I said, I was thinking about the color of the caponata, and then I was thinking about decor, and I was thinking of the reds and the greens, and that just made me think of decor in general in the kitchen. And what I what I feel is very important is, uh, you know, there's so many permanent elements, uh, chef, in a kitchen. You have the cabinetry, you have the countertops, you have the appliances. Nothing. There's no pillows to change. You know, there's no rugs to change. You have such permanent elements. So what can, what doesn't have to be permanent is the decorative layer, and and that can take place uh, in the nearby breakfast area. It could be on the backsplash. It could be on any available wall space. 
and I, I think it's really great to be able to change this decorative layer because it keeps the, uh, the, the kitchen fresh. It keeps the decor fresh. I mean, who wants to go into the kitchen not only day after day, but year after year with the same things that you're looking at? And we know kitchens, you know, they'll last 10, 20 years. So I, I, I like to build in... Uh, the potential for for change in the kitchens, which made me think about photography, because you know, with all these new apps and and these wonderful point and you can have a point and shoot that has uh, you know th that the images are 20 megapixels, and you can do them in in raw. There's raw and JPEG type of uh, imagery. So point is, anyone can be a good photographer. And and how nice is it to be able to, uh, you know, take pictures whether they're of food or your children or vacations or just your backyard flowers, and then have an ever-changing sort of, um, uh, you know, palette or decorative layer, which is what I like to call it in the kitchen. Uh, one thing uh, that I, I'm excited about most recently. So the point is everyone is a photographer that's number one if you don't think you are you are because these apps so many apps help you be that and and I'll talk about that um, but one type of uh, use of photography I'm really excited about is uh, murals photographic murals and uh, so tell me when you're ready with the pasta chefs tell me when you're ready for the grand presentation I will. I'm just getting it ready now. I've got the pasta out, and I've actually oiled it just a little bit. Now, from here, you can do one or two things. You can either put a little cheese on now. Let's get a little. Of course, you're going to serve it with more cheese, and then we're going to put on a nice dollop on. More. Okay, so uh, now you I'm just put on the camera. cheese. Let's see. There we go. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. You see that? I see that. It is. It's amazing. I mean, it's so simple. It took you all of five minutes. I love the dish. Love that dish. Uh, the white dish just does it justice. Love. Yep. Yep. I mean, first of all, who doesn't love pasta? Second of all, the visual of it, the colors, it's just so it's so appetizing. I think it's very appetizing. This delay seems to be getting longer. Oh, I think he dropped out and came back in. Are you back in with us? You there, Susan? Yeah, you're back in. Yeah, I'm in. here. I, I don't know what happened there. We had a little. Yeah, I'm here. We had a little. Glitch. Okay, good. I think that's better. I think that's better. The um, it, the dishes itself is beautiful. The visual is beautiful. It just looks appetizing, Chef. Thank you. This that's much better. I think that audio is much better. Okay, let me uh, let me kill this other one just to get rid of it, and then we will just stay on with the two of us. Good, good. I think that's I think that's much better already. So beautiful job, inspiring, easy, summer. You know, it's all good. Yep, yeah. and it's something you know takes and and this will hold up really well in the refrigerator too. So. You know, you can make this when you make it. You know, I'm sure it's not going to hang around more than a few days because it is just so delicious. Um, but I mean, you can make it when you have time, and then when you come home from work, you want a, a nice meatless Monday. Monday, and of course, you can add more than this to it. You can mix it around and really get the flavors all through it. And you serve this with a loaf of bread and either some sparkling water or a glass of wine, and you have a very nice light summertime meal. 
Yeah. It looks terrific. It looks terrific. So yeah, so that inspired that your dish totally inspired me to, uh, you know, to think about this decorative layer in terms of photography in the kitchen. And I've done a lot of, you know, I, I'm sure many of us, if you love food, you're inspired to take pictures of food also. And uh, you know, and why not put them in your kitchen or or if or you'll put them on your blog. So you know learning how to be creative with photography can can enrich uh, so many parts of of what you do during the day and how you live. Um, one thing I want to show you, I began to speak about uh, murals, which is one way I love uh, photography. I love to use photography. And I did a mural uh, when I designed the kitchen, and I'd like to show it to you, so I'll screen share it. You're going to see a big picture of my face it looks like I'm looking into the distance so ignore that but <laughs> but I'll show you the image of, of a mural that I put in a kitchen that I designed that um, anyone can do anyone can do this and chef you and I you know our good friend Lori Leisure from Customized Walls she helped me uh, I took the image and she helped me with this mural so I'll show you this right now. Here it is. Okay. So this is a, a it's a small picture, but I hope you can see it. Now this is looking from the kitchen island into the dining area. And the next image I'm going to show you is head on. You can see the table. You can see a, a cushion behind the table is a banquette, which, which is seating for the table and and what you see is the mural now that mural it's it's of a pathway to a beach I took the picture this is a picture that I took in Denmark uh, so I, and then what I did was I did a series of treatments onto this image uh, and then I sent it to Lori from Customized Walls to make up in a mural which is probably somewhere around eight feet wide I think by about six feet tall. So then I put the mural on the wall, and then I thought, well, I have this, I have this old painting. Let me put this on there and see what happens. And so I did, and I think it's pretty cool. What do you think? I do. I do. It looks like a window into the picture. Uh, it's really pretty cool, and that's a beautiful image too. The walkway. Yeah, but you know what? It's I, I was I didn't even have a tripod. It's it's so easy. And what I'd like to do too is show you a few other um, images of. Let's see. Here. Oh, I have to stop the screen share. Okay. Okay. Here I am. Yeah, I'd like to. Well, let me let me first actually give you a few pieces of advice that have been helpful to me uh, in photography. Again, once I, I spoke about how change in the decor, it just keeps things fresh in the kitchen. And anyone can be a photographer. Uh, what you want to do too is you want, want to have fun. You want to shoot at different angles. Everyone thinks to shoot head on at eye level. And that's where most people shoot. But if you, if you if you try different angles, you try say a super close up or you go under and shoot upward, you will get angles and a different viewpoint that you could never even even you know guess that you could get before. So so doing things differently is you know the key to creativity. Also, uh, you can you know think about color. I mean, to have a decorative layer in the kitchen with photography, you may want to think about doing a number of images in a theme, which might be a color theme. You may be you may want a topic of food. I know I have done I, a big series in my breakfast room, of course, of my grandchildren, and uh, you know my grand and they were just some close-ups and it was a whole theme and then another time I did another theme maybe you have a vacation spot or a theme of architecture or a theme of food things like that so you can you can 
really give your kitchen a fresh look several times a year uh, by, by just doing photography. And you know what? It's so inexpensive. It can be very inexpensive. Uh, a print can cost, oh, two dollars for a print or a few dollars for a print. A mural might cost you a little more, but a mural can be somewhat permanent. You can have a mural on, I mean, even if it costs you $100 and you have it in your breakfast room wall for a year, it's really worthwhile. Uh, so I like to do that. Uh, are you there, Dennis? Because I think you're kind of back and forth. I'm, I'm here. I'm just having something, some problems with my... Uh... My um, my signal oh, yeah, keeps but that's dropping. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I'm dropping in and out on me. Uh, okay. We're well, hope hopefully people will hear me. Um, I want to tell you about a couple of great apps, uh, and I think they might be they're available in um, the iOS, the Apple App Store. I'm not sure about Google Play, but one is uh, v VSCO has amazing filters that that mimic film from the old film and they have there are just so many they're very elegant the filters are very very elegant so I like VSCO that's one of my favorites and there's one that's a little bit under the radar that's called Mextures that's M-E-X-T-U-R-E-S that is have you heard of it chef it is really um, it, it, it's just cool and this no, and it I makes have not. Any it is you you should really look it up um, it makes you look like the most hipster cool exclusive photographer ever and it's not just you know I think we can get tired of those vintage type uh, overlays so and yes they're fun and yes they're nice but there's more to life than the vintage filters and sometimes we just need a little more um, inspiration so those are two that I would I would really recommend uh, I would also recommend uh, you know shooting in raw your camera shooting in raw rather than JPEG because you can you have a wider dynamic range of being able to uh, you know if you see those super white spots they're called they're called blown out highlights and so you can you can uh, rein them in if you sh in most cases if you shoot in raw, uh, and this is for more advanced photographers. I like to use sometimes I use Lightroom, uh, and I use um, I, I shoot with a Nikon. So actually, the Nikon software does a does a better job than Lightroom in in what comes out of the camera so I use that and I also I have some super amazing cool plugins to Lightroom one of which is called um, I have the Nick collection which I'm sure many of you have heard of which Google has recently purchased and they lots of cool effects but one that has even more effects it's by on one software on one software and it's called um, perfect effects and they what they have is textures that can be overlaid onto an image and it just looks so dreamy it can look dreamy and subtle or it can look grunge it can look like grunge and all kinds of things so uh, you know that's where the fun is and once you uh, you implement some of these aids photographic aids you know what you look like such a professional and and creativity just like in food chef creativity does not have to be uh, you know it well certainly it, it's not one way you do it this way with a little variation find your own creativity just like in food but you know make it your own do it your own way there is such little right and wrong and that is really new to amateur photographers I'd say only in the past few years so uh, you know so don't don't be afraid you know if you think you're making a mistake there are people who will say oh my gosh I've never seen anything so wonderful so you know just go for it and and just like in food just try different things now how about you chef you do a lot of photography do you have any thoughts on on photography whether it's food 
food or or do you use photography for your own decoration in your home? Oh, there's a big lag. There is a very oh the leg is big. For me or I can't hear you or what? I think we're cutting out. I... Are you there? I'm here. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can see a storm in the that's really getting I don't know if that's affecting me or um, shouldn't. We have cable. <laughs> so Okay, maybe we should wrap it up for today. Yeah, I think we're with the issues. I don't know. And Kathleen DeCosma said she had problems too. So um, it could be just system wide too. You never know. Google could be doing something. But uh, let's let's call it a, a wrap while we still can. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, ask everybody to come join us next week for around the kitchen table, and we'll share some more. And if you want to put some of your links in there to some of those photo things uh, in the uh, comments, then people can come back later and check some of those apps we're talking about. All right, so let's let's call it a day while we still can, and thank you so much for coming to Around the Kitchen Table, and I hope you enjoy the nada, and uh, check from next week, and I'll have some other ideas up for you. Okay. So take care. Bye-bye, everybody.